Let's now talk about the moons of the solar system. And the first question is, what is a moon? Planets and asteroids in our solar system orbit the sun. Moons, also known as natural satellites, orbit planets and asteroids. There are more than 200 moons in our solar system, and most orbit the gas giants, with Saturn and Jupiter leading the moon counts. But an even smaller world, like Pluto, can have five moons in orbit. Moon comes in many shapes and sizes and type. Most are airless, but a few have atmosphere, even hidden ocean. There are dozens of moons in our solar system, and even a few asteroids have small companion moons. So let's talk about variety. And you can see, looking at this image, there's a whole variety of moons, all different names, all different features. So there's no one moon alike. Okay, but moon is actually a nickname. Okay, so let's take a look at, see how well you remember your moons of the planets. So let's go through and see how much you remember. Uh, Mercury has zero moon. Venus has zero. Earth has one. Mars has two. Jupiter, a long time it had only 16 confirmed moon. Now it's gone up to 79. And Saturn, this last year, went up to 82. And then Uranus is 27. And then Neptune is 14. There's over 205 moons total. Now, you could include Pluto, but Pluto has five, but it's a dwarf planet. But even dwarf planets and exoplanets, asteroids, add up to many more moons in the solar system. So you go outside and you say, look toward the south, you'll see Jupiter and Saturn. So early September, they're just going to be just above the southern horizon. So if you click on Jupiter okay, and you lock on it, let me show you what we would see. If you zoom in on Jupiter, you see the planet, but then you see the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. Right? So what you'll see are the largest moon of Jupiter. If you get in a little bit tighter, you see a few more, but remember, Jupiter has about 79 moons in total. Right? So. This is one of the fun things about observing Jupiter is that you can actually see the moon of Jupiter. So let me do this. You can see that if I lock on it, and then if we move the date one day, look at that. Moon changes its position relative to Jupiter. Okay? And so once you do that, okay, let's go to another date here. 13, 14. Now Jupiter turns on its axis for 10 hours. So that's why these moons appear to be going in, um, pretty quickly around the planet Jupiter. Okay? So let me introduce you to these uh, four Galilean moons. Let's start off with Callisto. Okay? We lock on Callisto and zoom in on it. And Callisto, it's a heavily crater moon okay? and there's no atmosphere it's airless so that's why it's been bartered over the time that we see lots and lots of craters on Callisto and then Ganymede Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system and just like Callisto you see lots of craters it has that kind of a grayish color okay? and it also had no moons okay? so it tells us the story how over time that we see these heavily cratered moons that what went on in the early solar system millions of years ago. This is Europa. Europa is the icy moon. And this is getting a lot of attention uh, because 
This is one of the very few minerals that actually has potential of water underneath that ice. So it has a core that's keeping the water warm. And then we have the icy surface. We actually seen fissures and cracks on the moon of Europa. And someday we will actually see a probe visiting Europa. And now let's move over here to a very interesting moon called Io. So we lock in on Io. You see, this is a moon that's closer to Jupiter. It's turning this stuff inside out. You see these black, black markings on the surface. And these are geysers and volcanoes. We actually have uh, footage of the volcanoes erupting on Io. And so those are the four largest moon for Jupiter. Now the remaining 79 moons, the smaller moons, are so far away and they're somewhere millions of miles away and so small they cannot be seen with a backyard telescope. But this is a fun observing opportunity that you can have and let me show you where you can find actually a web page that allows you to see where, which moon that you're looking at when you see Jupiter. Then the best resource is actually go to the website called inthesky.org. And this is one of my personal favorites that I like to go to get a reference. And if you go to this site and go to the Jupiter and moons of Jupiter, you can actually get the layout of what the moon position will be relative to Jupiter. So at the top you have Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. They're color coded. So you can see Callisto really takes a wide uh, swing versus Jupiter. Jupiter is the gray line. Okay? And then we have Ganymede, kind of a, a burgundy color. Ganymede stays fairly close. Right? And so you can see it kind of swings in and out. But then we have Io and Europa. They seem to be going in and out all the time. Okay, And so we see Io is the closest to Jupiter. And then we see Europa. Right? And so next Let's say you're going to go out and look at the uh, Jupiter on around September 10th, okay, in the evening. So it'll be coming up close to the 11th. So if you were to go out and do your homework and you look at Jupiter and say, gosh, which moon is which, okay? And this would be the view, September 10th at 9 p.m. There's Io, okay, there's Io right there. And then Jupiter, there's Jupiter. This is Europa, it's not label, uh, but that's Europa. Red is Ganymede, and then the blue is Callisto. So that's how you keep track of who's who out in the, um, when you look at the planet Jupiter, and you go to this website and do your homework, and then you go out and you can enjoy the Galilean moons of Jupiter. And then after you do your research on what moons are going to be around Jupiter on September 10th. Here we are on the 10th. And if we would go to Jupiter and lock in on Jupiter. And remember the position that we talked about. Okay, there's Jupiter. Zoom in. And there they are. Okay. Just as we looked it up, and we, there you can see Io. Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Generally, Callisto at the furthest, generally, but not always. Right? And then we have Ganymede, Europa, and Io, generally are pretty close. Where they can change the position, they can even move behind Jupiter, in front of Jupiter. It's really a lot of fun to look at, and you can see how often they change. For people who are looking at Jupiter for, for the very first time, this is a, a fun thing to do. And then we have Saturn, okay? Good old Saturn. And then lock in on Saturn. Can you see any moons around Saturn? Absolutely. Okay, so let's zoom in on Saturn. And then you zoom in on Saturn, okay? what you're looking at now are some of the bright moons of Saturn, but the largest moon is Titan. Okay, so Titan 
is an interesting moon as well. And this is a moon that has a very thick atmosphere. We actually sent a probe kind of Horton a few years ago into the atmosphere of Titan and was able to get some images of the surface as well as uh, some of the interesting lakes that are in the, uh, around the area of Titan. So that one is also a very interesting moon and it's big enough to be seen in the backyard telescope. On a really good night, you might be able to see a few more, but remember, just like Jupiter, there's about 82 moons surrounding the two gas giants. Right? And so we have those wonderful moons. And then if we go way over here, there's somebody coming out over there on the east. Not quite, but if we go up another hour, there he is. We have Mars. Right? You can click on Mars and then lock in on Mars. Okay, and you see the red planet, but what you'll see if you really zoom in is Deimos and Phobos. Now, it's not possible to see these moons of the um, Mars because they're so small and so dark. They're very difficult to see. So we have, first of all, Phobos. And if you zoom in on Phobos, Okay, and you, well, you see it's a tiny little moon, but many scientists uh, believe that these were former asteroids at one point, um, and they're now orbiting around Mars. So if we lock in on Deimos, and you look at Deimos, it's also a very interesting rocky moon. And so Mars has two, as you recall, when we were looking up on the um, planets, okay? And then while we're over here, we got Uranus. Now Uranus, as you can see right here in the data, it's a magnitude of about six, just on the verge of the uh, limit of the human eye. Uh, even if we can get in on Uranus, it's a tiny blue dot. Okay? But Uranus also has some interesting moon. It's not possible to see it in the backyard telescope unless you have a very, very large telescope. But you can see there's moons around Uranus as well. Okay. And we back out again. So you'll see that Uranus in relation to Mars is not too far away. Okay. And then if we go further into the evening, see we have there's our moon, the one and only moon for the Earth. Okay. And the moon goes through the phases. We're all familiar with our own moon. It's actually called Luna. Okay. And it's actually a nickname. So um, the moon is a nickname for Luna. Okay. And we get all the details of the moon. Go through the phases. 29 and a half days. Uh, go through a lunar cycle. So that means the moon goes around the Earth about roughly 12 times in a single year. And it's the easiest object to find uh, with the backyard telescope, binoculars, and, of course, the human eye. And so each day, the moon moves about roughly 13 degrees uh, to the east. So if we go look at it on the 11th and the next night, to go a little bit further, actually, let me lock on that. You can, you can get um, a good view of the moon and go on the 13th, get a little bit further. Okay, and then you go through the phases to watch the moon. Okay, so we have lots of opportunities, lots of different ways that you can look at the moons. Uh, we have, of course, Venus doesn't have any moon. Okay, none. And as well as Mercury. Okay, and so these are kind of the observational uh, astronomy where you're looking at planets. You can actually see some moon while you're out of observing. And so uh, go out and check it out and do a little bit of a homework and then you can enjoy the viewing of the moon. And let me show you a wonderful website that you can actually get some in-depth information about all of the moons in the solar system. If you go to this website, from the NASA website, it's the NASA Science Solar System Exploration. And this is an easy 
uh, website to use and a great resource and this is what I highly recommend if you want to learn more about the solar system, the planets, and the moon. So if you go to the website and you can see right after you have the menu, they have solar system, they have planets, there's all the planets and the dwarf planets, and there's the moons, asteroids and comets and meteors and all the wonderful resources that you can uh, use for additional study. So if you, let's go over to the moon. If you hit that, okay, and there you have wonderful in-depth information about the moons of the solar system. Okay, and nicely laid out. Uh, you can actually go on your own, go to the another website called Eyes on the Solar System. Uh, and there you can actually kind of fly around the solar system yourself. Uh, maybe then take a look at the latest news related to the moon. And some images, uh, some events. Okay? And then go to the different destination. Okay? So let's go back at the top. And you go to the moon. And then, uh, you, first of all, go to the Earth. Okay? And then you have, once you click on it, Hey, you have the information right there. It downloads all the data. Hey, and then once down, it gets downloaded, there's your moon. And it's labeled with all the different landing sites that occurred on the moon. Do you notice that if you go to the far side, there's not many there, many uh, landers or probe. Hey, so you can interact with this and find out about the different uh, uh, mission that occurred on the moon and then you can pick and choose what you want to look at you have the geography as well and you can see some highlights of the different geology and then you can say what the moon made out of you can go to the core and you see that moons are very thick has a very small core but has a very thick mantle so most moons are, are like this, okay? And down you can look at the different data, uh, how we view the moon, an elevation, and then a uh, gravity map. It, then it's cool. And then the surface slope. So you have all of that data. This is the phase that the moon is in on a certain date. So here we have going in September. Look at the full moon going into the new moon. Okay, look at all that. Okay, so you have that. And then the lighting, you can, if you don't want the phases, you can make the moon come up, appear to be light, and then do reset. So you can see there's a lot of interesting things that you can uh, use in this fashion. And you can see the depth distance, how many uh, humans visited the moon, but there's only 12 moonwalkers. And then over 100 robots have visited the moon, the very well-visited uh, moon. So you can take a look at all the facts and information. What a great resource. And then you go back up to, let's go to Mars. Okay, there's the moons of Mars, the and Phobos. Okay, they look like giant potatoes floating out in space. Okay. And now uh, you see some images. You so say you need to get images. You got your images there. Okay. And so that's another great resource. Let's go back up here and go to Jupiter. Okay. There's Jupiter. As I we mentioned, we saw Jupiter and its moon. Okay. And then we go down and see and look at the pictures. Io, Europa, Ganymede. Okay. And then we can continue on. Look at Callisto. And these are also pictures that were taken by um, most likely the Voyager or uh, Cassini. And then if you go down all the moons, okay, we've got all the different confirmed moons. Okay? And you can look at some of these have pictures like this here, there's Callisto. But look at all the different names. Okay, And so these are a uh, great resource. You can see more and it keeps adding up. Look at that. Okay, all the information about the moon for Jupiter. And then we have Saturn. Saturn's moon. Okay, you can get in-depth and overview and 
Okay, there's the Enchiladas and then Titan. It's Titan with a very thick atmosphere. If you click on that, you get even more information about Titan. This is an actual image. And uh, so this is a great resource. And then this is how we got some images about Titan. Okay, and then go to Enceladus. And then Enceladus, look at that. Very interesting. Uh, has cracks, has lots of geologic features. Uh, it talks about the distance and size. Uh, so uh, this is a great resource to have if you're talking about the moons. And then you go through all of the small moons, large moons, uh, Dione, Heli, uh, in, in, uh, we have one here that I like to talk about in Pontus that uh, has a really odd features on the moon. But uh, interesting enough, the images of, these, of the moon here re resembles somewhat of what Pluto looks like or Charon. So they're using this data along with Pluto. Okay? And then you go down, you go to Mimus. Uh, we have uh, all of these different kinds of moons. You know, it keeps adding up. What's interesting, too, is that what they're finding of some of the moon, 20 of them, are orbiting clockwise versus the other moving counterclockwise around Saturn. So... That one it really has caused a lot of conversation. That just happened last year. And then Uranus, you know, picture there. We see a lot of these pictures were taken from Voyager. There's Ariel. Okay? And if you look at the names and such, Obion and there's Puck. Okay? And so you could, there's a lot of fun names in there. And uh, good luck with the pronunciation if you're going to use it for a report. And then Neptune. Okay? And then you got the view of Neptune, some of the images that were taken. And many of these moons are really quite tiny. Okay? Um, but this is also another fun uh, resource. So you can look at that. And of course, they've got Pluto. And Pluto is included. Okay? And there's uh, Pluto and Charon. And then you got Charon, Hydra, Nix, Six. You can see that the images are not very clear, but uh, we just recently got this image uh, from New Horizon, uh, the Charon. Look at all the features. I mean, scientists believe this is a uh, moon and Pluto, for that matter. It's a heavily covered moon with ice, and it's still maybe fairly young uh, in some fashion. Okay, uh, so. What a great resource you can find and everything you want to know. And then if you're going to go to asteroids, okay? Asteroids, believe it or not, have moons, okay? And so a lot of some of these images would show uh, there's moons. There's one right there, Ida. Zoom in and look at that. There's a little guy right there, okay? And so orbiting or hanging out with uh, Ida. And so... Uh, the moon count keeps going up and up and up, and there's a, no better way than to go to this website, and then you can actually get a lot of great information about the moon, including our own.